Hello everyone and welcome to another Wednesday drawing session with me, Frank Cho. There's my trusty Pentel mechanical pencil, 0 0.7 lead, uh, HB lead, and my kneaded eraser. And I noticed that my mechanical pencil is out of lead, so I'll show you how I fill the lead real quick. Yeah, as simple as that, just take off the eraser and pop in the lead like that. And then put the eraser back on and then put the metal, the metal cap back on and then click it a few times until the lead is, uh, the lead comes out. And here's my favorite paper to draw on, Stratmore Bristle Bore 300 series with vellum surface. I like the vellum surface because it has the tooth that it grips the, the pencil very well. So today I am going to draw Psylocke, one of the most confusing characters in the uh, X-Men uh, universe. Now I read X-Men from issue 166 to 203 around there when uh, Storm officially became the new leader of the X-Men. So I kind of missed the whole the, the rise of the Psylocke. Now, the Psylocke character um, is just confusing because it was originally Betsy Braddock um, and then later on, who was a, a white English lady, and then later on she changed, physically changed into a uh, an Asian uh, Japanese lady. So um, it made absolutely no sense to me. Uh, so that was one of the reasons I... I kind of stopped reading X-Men. That was roughly around the time that I just completely just gave up on the X-Men because it was just confusing as hell. Uh, and Psylocke is one of the characters that confused the hell out of me. I, I just couldn't wrap my brain around it. How do you become like a white woman to a Japanese woman, you know? Actually, actually the answer is very simple. Um, I think Jim Lee wanted to draw a, a hot Asian martial arts chick. Uh, I think that was it. So anyway, so with Psylocke, um, she has this thing called the Psychic Knife, which, again, I have no idea what what's that about. It's like a, um, it's like an energy blade that she can kind of pop up from her hand and stab people with it. Because that's what uh, X-Men is. X-Men is, you know, basically... Um, there's a lot of Wolverine-like, uh, characters going around where they have these knives and other sharp things and claws that, will they can pop up and stab people with, so. Anyway, I've had, a I had this image in mind where, uh, Psylocke is now, the Psylocke that I'm drawing is, I guess the second version is not Betsy Braddock, it's, uh, Kwanin. Uh she is the, uh, the the supreme ninja assassin for the hand, and uh, so she has she's popping her psychic knife in one hand, and on the other hand she is holding the um, the short ninja sword. So that's the pose I had in mind, and um, once I had that pose in mind is fairly easy. I wanted her kind of like crouching, uh, ready to pounce with her psychic knife to stab someone and she has that sore. So, um, again, I don't get the character. I, I really don't know. <laughs> uh, I was actually reading about it, uh, before I drew it, because uh, she wasn't, she wasn't my favorite. She was, she was not one of my favorite characters, uh, and so I actually knew nothing about her. And then the more I read about her, the more um, insane the storyline was, uh, and uh, and I actually I I think that I jumped off at the right point before uh, things got really really confusing in the X Men universe. With a lot of the, the the body swaps and the time jumps and all that stuff. 
So anyway, going back to uh, Psylocke. So there I am drawing the head. Um, just make sure I had the uh, the strong jawline. Because every superhero, especially women, need a very strong, clean, um, slender jawline. So working on her eyes. Giving her that nice uh, slender uh bottom half of her face and uh, establishing the hairline. And the ear. And then the, the, the neck muscle. And the arm. I mean, at this point in my career, I mean, I, I pretty much know all the, the the muscle group, all the muscle landmark uh, on the uh, anatomy. So it's fairly easy for me to just draw. Um, so I recommend you guys, if you really want to learn how to draw the human figure, to really study anatomy and uh, how I learned my anatomy was uh, as I said before in my other uh, videos is um, I used to I still lift weights I used, I used to lift weights because I wrestled in high school and uh, and me and my friend used to lift weights all the time and I still do uh, I don't go crazy like I used to back in high school and college uh, I tend to do uh, more of the uh, more uh, cardio than anything else. I still lift free weights, um, which I recommend people doing if you want to get in shape and build muscles to uh, build, uh, to lift free weights. Um, so that's how I learned how to draw muscles because I used to read a lot of uh, bodybuilding magazine like Muscle and Fitness and Flex magazine. And uh, to um, and they really had like a great breakdown on muscle groupings and how the muscle moved and how the muscle looked, you know, at a certain uh, when it's flexed a certain way. And so the the human the the female anatomy and the male anatomy are pretty much identical. Um, if you like strip away the skin and the uh, and the fatty deposits. So they all have this exact same musculature, uh, the muscle uh, grouping, and uh, landmarks. So that's what I do. So you can see when I draw the figure, I just like strip it down to the uh, to the muscle level, and then once I have the muscle level, then I start building um, building from that foundation. Yeah, so I'm actually right there, um, kind of trying to, like, I lightly drew the hand to see how the, the sword is going to uh, be held. Now, I wasn't too happy with the first leg pose, and so I raised it and, uh, and redrew it, lowering it. So again, this is very important. This is the, the pencil stage is, is the most fun that I have when I'm when I'm drawing because 
if I mis make a mistake, if something doesn't look right, I just erase it, you know. So again, don't be too uh, too shy about erasing. This is a stage that you're supposed to erase. If, if you mess up or something doesn't work right, erase it and start over. And I said in my past video, if it looks right, it's right. If it looks wrong, then it's wrong. And if it looks wrong, then erase it and, uh, and start over and fix it. So there I am drawing the fist. And uh, it didn't look right to me. So I erased it and, and started over. So at this point, I kind of, you know, I'm happy with how the overall pose came out, the 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 whole balance and all that. And now I'm as now I'm adding the uh, uh, the her breast. Just giving a rough shape of the energy, the psychic blade how the energy will um, will pop out and I am adding the roughly adding the the, the hair placement And I kind of like how the, the, the hair placement went. So I'm jumping ahead and uh, start doing the uh, her costume. Now her costume is very simple. She's wearing a uh, basically a one-piece bathing suit, a black bathing suit. And then she has this sash um, that goes around her waist. Now I thought the sash was a little too high up, so I decided to raise it and lower it. Now the 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 women costume with the sash. And that was mainly uh, Dave Cochran's uh, design. Uh, Dave Cochran had a very 1970-ish design sense uh, and really pretty much put a lot of sash on, on women character, on their costume, um, which gave it a very distinct look and a kind of bit of an outdated look. But, uh, but it actually, you know, had the little... Add energy to the drawing because the the sash, kind of you know. Kind of, kind of flowed out from the costume. Give it that extra excitement. But yeah, so that sash thing is uh, definitely influenced by uh, Dave Cockrum's uh, design sense. Which makes sense because Dave Cockrum was one of the architect of the new X Men. Back in the 70s, back in the 70s and early 80s. Again, she is wearing a uh, black bathing suit, so just kind of darken everything up.
I think lowering that leg definitely helped the overall uh, pose and design of the of this art of the drawing. And then there I'm drawing the hair. So she had this really thick, shiny uh, hair, thick and black. To make the hair look 3D, um, the trick is to uh, darken everything, and uh, and where every time there is a uh, a curved point, that's where you kind of add the highlight, and that will give the hair a very three dimensional look. So adding the lips, just really defining the lips, adding the highlight. I'm just reinforcing the uh, the outline of the uh, of the drawing. So yeah, the 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 lighting kind of shifted in my studio because it's been kind of gray and then and then the and the sun came out and so it's been kind of crazy outside. So. I noticed that uh, looking at the video that, that there's been a couple of uh, lighting shifts, the overall tone uh, lighting shift in the studio. There I am uh, redefining the, the sash. So here I am start darkening the uh, the costume. And again, same uh, goes with the uh, the hair. Uh, you basically darken in everything and then you just kind of like highlight all the uh, the curved parts, the rounded parts, and it just give it the uh, the extra uh, the three dimensional look when you do that. So where the collarbone is, you know, that's, that's the raise point. So you kind of make that lighter. And then underneath her, uh, her, her uh, boob, that's where um, a lot of the shadow falls because it's, you know, it's underneath something that projects out. So 
there I am adding the uh, intercostal muscles. Giving it a little bit of that, uh, that too light, um, um, lighting for her torso. So you have, uh, one light from one side and then another light from the other side. It kind of gives it the, you know, casting the shadow in the middle, kind of. So if you want, uh, look at, uh, look at some of the, um, the one piece bathing suit and then you'll some of it it'll, it'll kind of reflect that actually the most of the stuff i learned how to shade uh like dark clothing is uh again looking at bodybuilding magazines because a lot of bodybuilders or actually all the bodybuilders uh really um put on a really dark deep tan um which um, which help make the the muscle pop out more defined it makes it look more defined and pop out more and so I use a lot of um, like a lot of bodybuilding magazine to kind of uh, figure out how they how the lighting works There I am adding the uh, using the eraser to erase the highlights and a uh, hair strand into the uh, the the hair. So once I highlighted the hair the hair strand by erasing it, I go back in and add a little bit of the uh, um, draw in a little uh, line underneath the uh, the highlighted area to give it that extra three dimensional look. This is very simple um, shading. Um, so the either side of the whatever her her ring or band arm band, uh, you, you shade it in dark, and in the middle, which is the the high point, the the raised area, you make that light, and that's just an easy easy. Um, Easy trick to to make things dimension three dimensional. Adding the uh, shading to her. her elbow high gloves. And then outlining, reinforcing the uh, the figure outline.
I mean, at this point, I've pretty much uh, uh, locked in the um, the figure. I'm happy happy with how the figure turned out. So I am just reinforcing the outline. Erasing the stray marks. <clears throat> the ankles, the foot. Smudging it to kind of softening, to soften all the uh, the black clothing. So again, here I am using the eraser to add the highlights. Adding the highlights to her quad, to her knee area. Now drawing the knee is pretty hard because uh, once when you bend the knee, the uh, the whole the anatomical landmark in the knee just completely shifts. So you got to be very careful with that. As I'm drawing her costume, I realize that, you know, her costume overall ain't, ain't too bad. It's very iconic. Very iconic, very simple, very clean design, which I like. So as I'm, like, drawing it and, and looking at her, um, it's not bad. There I am adding the highlights by uh, erasing the, uh, lifting the, 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 the graphite off the paper. And so, which in turn adds the highlight. Which makes everything look so much better when you add highlights. And then drawing in that sash. So I, I use that sash to flow out to the left side to kind of counterbalance the uh, the sore on her right right side, on the right side. And then there is the psychic blade. Which makes no sense. Um, it's just... Yeah, I, don't, I, I can't explain what a psychic blade is. But I guess it's kind of like a power blast. You know, so it's like a, it's like a um, power power blade that you can just stab at people. Again, I, at this point, I kind of like given up on the X Men, and you know, and just like 
things were just so wacky. And it's like, all right. And kind of walked away from it. <laughs> I really did sound like an old man there. This isn't my X Men. I'm walking away. <laughs> But in comics, everything change, you know, or there's an illusion of change and old characters get kind of pushed to the back and new characters are, uh, come up to replace the, uh, to replace the old characters. No, actually, now I think about it, it really doesn't. All the characters pretty much stay the same. You have Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. They've been around for about 80 years. Same with all the Marvel Universe. Spider-Man, he's been around for 60 years. So the comics is about is the illusion of change. But now I think about it, they pretty much remain the same. And certain characters over time get pushed to the forefront while other characters get pushed to the background. But, you know, this it happens. So, like life, it happens. As I said earlier, the more I draw uh, the more I draw her, the more I really dig her costume. I mean I'm I'm a very I'm a bit of a neat freak, so I like I like very simple streamlined costumes. And Psylocke definitely has a very simple and streamlined and iconic costume. The more I, the more I draw it and, and the more I look at her. And there it is. There's that ninja. Ninja sword. There is making her costume more shiny, like she's wearing vinyl bathing suit. Yeah, I think I probably need to go back and reread her origin story. How she became from a, a British white woman to a Japanese woman. So I finished with the figure. I just had to add some little texture on the ground. Like she's on a cobblestone. Like an old, like an old English cobblestone. Kind of a nod to her English heritage, even though she's a, she's now a Japanese woman. So yeah, having fun, adding touch up. So there I am, just kind of like looking at it to make sure there's anything missing. And the hair's tweaked the hair a little bit. And there it is. Psylocke, one of the most confusing characters in the X-Men universe.